central banks globally, they've been massively accumulating gold. You know, gold is completely out of the system. It doesn't need anybody to say that it's money. And according to the Bank for International Settlements, gold held at home runs no political risk. It is the only financial asset that runs no counterparty risk. In other words, this is not your debt that I have to count on you to pay, right? It runs no counterparty risk. It's a proven inflation hedge over time. And, you know, gold is critical for you to have completely outside of the system because look at this little teeny thing. And this is a one ounce gold coin. And it's an easy way to carry a lot of wealth in a small little package that truly is outside of the system that I hold and I own outright. It's critical. Gold is the primary currency metal, and it's the metal against which they revalue currencies when they do a re an overnight reset. Silver is the secondary monetary metal. While both of them are used in manufacturing, silver has a lot more manufacturing use. Gold does not get used up in production and in industry. It's all recoverable. So we can account for about 98% of it. All the gold that's ever been mined in thousands of years, silver gets used up. So you will see silver move toward its fundamental value along with gold. But um, it's not going to be Wall Street that's telling you what its true value is. It's going to be the central bank's when they do those overnight revaluations. And I would like to say that even when we go into the digital currency, the digital dollar, people will think, oh, well, then that's going to fix the system. But no, because they're not going to change their behavior. What absolutely 100% has to, has to, has to happen is that all of the debt that we've accumulated, the trillions and trillions and trillions of debt that has been globally accumulated needs to be burned off. And that's what the hyperinflation is really about, is burning off all of that debt. And then it becomes obvious to everybody that the dollars, euros, yen, whatever it is, that they have absolutely zero value. I know this is gonna sound crazy, but you know, a lot of things that are coming to pass now that I said in the past sounded crazy back then. Oh, you can't say that. My job is to tell you so that you can make educated choices. So what will happen is we'll go into hyperinflation mode and then people will lose complete confidence in the currency, in the system, and they'll stop using it. And they'll go to a barter system. So you'll get real local for a while. That's where silver really comes into play and you'll go real local. And then what will happen is they'll want you to use the currency again. So, you know, like a pack of gum could cost, you know, $12,000, which I know sounds outrageous, but it won't soon, right? So they'll lop off zeros and they'll do that overnight revaluation. And then you'll see gold, like in Venezuela, it went up overnight, like 3,500%, something like that. And Venezuela has had now three overnight revaluations against gold. So they do that to gain the public confidence again, but they won't change behavior yet. Globally, on average, it takes them doing it three times before then they go into a system where we actually would have gold to a degree backing the new currency. That's when they'll get the confidence back. But the, cur the next currency won't be good until there's a component of gold to stabilize it because what gold does is it requires the government to have fiscal responsibility. You know, they have to live within their means or at least on a relative basis. Right now, there's no restrictions. I mean, as we've seen, as we've witnessed, no restrictions on how much new money can be printed, but every time that happens, the value of what's already out there is lost, or it loses more, I should say. But we're all experiencing a huge amount of inflation right now, although it's going to get worse. I, there's not one doubt in my mind, I can't guarantee this, but you know, I'm pretty darn sure that we are at the beginning of a hyperinflationary event. 
And the only difference between inflation and hyperinflation is the speed of that inflation. The problem is that there's virtually no purchasing power left in the U.S. dollar. If you go on the Federal Reserve's website, the FRED, F-R-E-D, and in the search bar, you put in purchasing power of the consumer dollar, what you'll see is that there's officially three cents left out of the original dollar's worth of purchasing power, which means it's worse than that. And all of this inflation that we're experiencing, we are losing rapidly whatever little bit of purchasing power is left. And so the bottom line to all of that is that we are at the end phase, the end of this fiat, this government debt-based money. And that is one of the patterns is very high inflation. You know, a lot of people procrastinate because they think they're going to magically know the second before they lose all choice. And that's really what my big concern is, is that people will postpone and postpone and they'll look at, you know, the meme stocks going up or the stock market going up and they'll think, oh, okay, look at, I can make all of this money there. So I'm not going to buy gold. I mean, what is gold doing? Yeah, it's near its high. It's too expensive. You know, interesting that stocks at a million times earnings are not too expensive, but gold that has the broadest base of buyer is. It's not. Gold and silver are the only assets that are severely undervalued because a rising gold price is an indication of a failing currency. So if you've got gains in some stuff, great. Take those gains. Whatever you have, you've got to get prepared and you've got to do it now. Because what is the price of your freedom worth? And that's really what's at jeopardy is your freedom. And it may sound crazy, but it is simply a repetition of history. The insiders, they're getting out. But the normal guy, he's staying in. She's getting in. Stop. Stop and just use the brain that you have and look at things because we are fast running out of time. You know, you have to look at your personal circumstance and what you have the ability to do. Don't procrastinate. Get your gold and silver now. Get your food, secure your water, energy, barter ability, wealth preservation. Come together in community. It's really the only chance that we have to have a more fair system on the other side of this and shelter. Those are all the things that we need no matter what's going on to have a reasonable standard of living.